Yes, Sarah Bell. Um, ArcGIS maps for Adobe Creative Cloud is the SRI's extension for Illustrator. Uh, maps for Adobe has been developed and specifically to provide map designers with familiar experience by enabling them to create maps using software they already know. This presentation demonstrates the cartographers and GIS professionals can integrate maps for Adobe into their map mapping workflows using ArcGIS Pro and Adobe Illustrator. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks All right. for. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. We awesome. Can. That was a really cool presentation. I'm going to turn my camera off, but hi, everybody out there. I too am on the West Coast. So I'm going to share my screen. This will be interesting. Boom. Do you see a slide? Thumbs up. I see a thumbs up. I'm going to, I'm just going to go with it. Right. All right. So yeah, I'm going to talk to you about cartography with ArcGIS Maps for Adobe Creative Cloud. Uh, my name is Sarah Bell. I work at Esri. Uh, I'm the lead, the new, as of last week, lead product engineer on this product. So. Um, I'm excited uh, to talk to you about this today. Um, thanks for having me, by the way. Uh, this is exciting. Um, it's hard having a full year without conferences, so I love this opportunity. Um, when I'm not, I already said this in the this morning, um, but this slide was in there already. So when I'm not mapping, I'm rock climbing. Um, and I live out, out uh, in the same region as one of the images that was shown in the um, previous um, previous presentation. I think it was the Olympic Peninsula. I'm, I'm in Bellingham, Washington. Uh, so today I'm going to talk to you about uh, what it is I do at Esri, um, which is work on ArcGIS Maps for Adobe Creative Cloud. And so for that's a really long product name. So for the remainder of this talk, you'll hear me call it Maps for Adobe for short. And I'm going to give you a brief background of what Maps for Adobe is and how you can get this mapping extension. Then I'm going to describe the two main avenues for using Maps for Adobe in your cartography workflows. I'll show a brief demo of each. Um, obviously, there's a lot you can do with map making software. Um, I'm going to just show you base, the really basic uh, workflow for each of the two main avenues. Um, I'm going to share how I created a map for America's newest national park, the New River Gorge National Park and Preservation in West Virginia. Um, next week is National Parks Week. And I'm going to close with some announcements of what's coming soon with Maps for Adobe and some links for how you can get started. So in short, Maps for Adobe is a mapping extension that was designed by Esri for use in Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop. And the majority of our users, of Maps for Adobe users, are using it in Adobe Illustrator. So I'm sure that even if you haven't used Adobe Illustrator, you've probably heard about it before. It's it's the world's most popular vector graphic editing program, and it's been a part of a lot of cartographers' workflows for decades. And um, you know, even large mapping organizations like National Geographic, for example, or the National Park Service, they use Illustrator in their static map workflows. So as an Illustrator extension, it extends, Maps for Adobe extends the capabilities of Adobe Illustrator so that users can create and de design maps directly inside of Illustrator um, in this tool that they're already familiar with. So it was originally designed to kind of help graphic designers who love Illustrator make maps with real spatial data. Um, instead of tracing, a lot of graphic designers will trace with vector artwork, they'll trace pictures of maps. Um, which sounds so tedious. So this way you can get real data in Illustrator. And because of that cloud part of uh, Adobe Creative Cloud, you do need an Adobe Creative Cloud version of Adobe Illustrator to use Maps for Adobe. After I do talks like these, I oftentimes times get asked, um, you know, does a Adobe Creative Cloud account come with Maps for Adobe? Um, we are not Adobe, we're Esri, so we can't grant a, an account. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, so the answer to that is no, it doesn't come with it. Alrighty, so we're going to take a look at some things you'll need to get started with Maps or Adobe. One cool thing that I think some of you might learn today is that many of you 
might already meet the requirements to use Maps for Adobe. So we're going to go to the product website real quick um, and look at that there. Uh, hopefully it goes to right on. All right, so this is the product website. Um, if I go to resources, uh, getting started. All right, so this tells you how to get it installed, um, the required software. If you have an ArcGIS Online account, um, you already in a Adobe Creative Cloud account, you're already able to use this. You'll need these versions of Illustrator and or Photoshop, depending on which one you want to use it in. Um, and we're continuously updating these as our um, as the requirements change over time. So back to the slideshow. Good. Right on. That worked. So like I said before, there are two main avenues for using Maps for Adobe in your cartography workflows. The first is the extension direct wor workflow, and that's where you make your maps with Maps for Adobe directly inside of Adobe Illustrator. And I'm going to demo that in a minute. This extension direct workflow is the original Maps for Adobe workflow. And up until last summer, it was the only one available. But in beginning in, I believe we released it in June. The second workflow, it's really exciting, is that it's we call it the ArcGIS Pro to Illustrator workflow. And with this workflow, you can export the maps and layouts that you make in ArcGIS Pro as a new file format. Um, there's a lot of cool things about this workflow, including that after you open that map that you made with ArcGIS Pro in Illustrator, you can continue to add data to that map with Maps for Adobe while you're in Illustrator. So the new file format that I'm talking about is the AIX file format. It's available in ArcGIS Pro 2.6 and later, and later, and we talk, it's, it stands for um, Adobe Illustrator Exchange File. So it's this special file type that can be unpackaged into neatly um, organized layers in Adobe Illustrator when you have Maps for Adobe installed. So I'm going to show you two quick demos. I'll show you. I'll start off with the extension direct workflow um, directly inside of Adobe Illustrator, and then I'm going to show you the ArcGIS Pro to Illustrator workflow. Um, so again, these are quick demos. I've already kind of made the maps, but I want to describe to you the steps. So we are going to go directly into Adobe Illustrator. So. Scott, could you give me a thumbs up if you see Adobe Illustrator? Uh, a blank white rectangle um, for anybody. I, no, I see your slide, your PowerPoint slideshow. Okay. Slide number one. Well, maybe I shared my. I'm going to stop sharing because Teams, I think you can share an application. Yeah. You need to share your screen or. Switch yeah. back and forth per. Share app. screen too. All right. Now, do you see a blank yes. rectangle? Awesome. That's what you should see. All right. So here we are in Adobe Illustrator. Hopefully, you were seeing my slides that whole time. <laughs> um, and if you uh, if you go to the Windows menu after you install an extension, you'll find them all in the extensions, uh, in the Windows extensions, and then here's a basic, this is a stock one that comes with Illustrator. This one's one to help make fonts, and this one is the one I'm going to demo for you. So the sign-in sheet, of course, goes on the other monitor. All right, this is a little bit of a sneak preview. This sign-in, if you were to download Maps for Adobe today, your sign-in would look a little different than it does now. This is the new upcoming version 3.0. So that's a good reminder for me to let you know this is a daily build I'm working on, and any mistakes I'm going to blame on the daily build and not me. Um, so you have a few different account types that you can use. Um, this one is coming up soon. Um, I'm going to sign in with my ArcGIS Online account. So if you have ArcGIS Online, this sign-in sheet might look familiar to you because that's essentially what I'm logging into. And the first tab that you interact with when you're making maps with the extension direct workflow is this map boards tab. And it's essentially a live web map. Um, so it's dynamic. I zoom in and data gets more detailed. I zoom out and it gets a little bit less detailed. Um, it's live. So the most common way, I'm going to 
make it a little bit more of an easier to read map, this brighter one. The most common way to create a map board with Maps to Adobe is to draw it here. And when I say map board, what I mean is the extent um, that you're mapping. We call it a map board. Um, it's kind of analogous to the art, the Illustrator art board. And as soon as I release um, where I draw my map, I can give it a name, Minnesota. I can pull in from any preset. So these are being read from Illustrator. So it's um, it's nothing, uh, I'll choose a letter. It says points. It will be eight and a half by 11 inches. Uh, it's just saying points because that is our pixels because that's the last. I always work in pixels in Illustrator. So it's just using the last unit that I uh, said. Or I can set the level of detail. Um, so we say level of detail. A lot of these terms we're using are, uh, well, a little bit more general than a GIS user might know scale, but um, we started this off for graphic designers. So we're um, working a little generally sometimes in our terms. Uh, and I can nudge it here and here. And so once you define your map board, you go to the compilation panel where you, it's called the compilation panel because you're compiling data. So this is not a live map. This is a preview. What you see is what you get. So as I zoom in, it's not going to update. Um, but that doesn't mean that your map will be pixelated <laughs> when you download it. It'll all resolve how you think it should. And then you can add data. You can add layers from ArcGIS Online. You can add a web map, uh, add places. So I could add, if I were like center data on Minneapolis St. Paul, I could type in coffee shops and add all of the coffee shops in that map extent as points. Um, or I could add a layer from a file. So from my machine, I could add a, a zipped shape file. KML or KMZ file, CSV or text file. Um, but, so that was the most common way you would do that, but I'm gonna do, yes, I'm sure I wanna delete. A little less common one, it's totally uh, not uncommon, but a little less common because I have a map I wanna show you. So in the map words panel now, I'm gonna import from a web map. So I could import from a layer, the ArcGIS Online layer, from a web map on ArcGIS Online, or from a local file. If I chose local file, let's say I had, a, I don't know, a shape file or CSV file of all of the cities, all of the major world cities. Uh, it would define the map board extent around that data extent, and then I could refine it. If I didn't really want it to do the whole world, I could shrink it down to Spain, for example. Um, I'm gonna say from web map, and go to ArcGIS Online. Um, and I'm going to type in, I'm so bad at talking and typing, so give me one se second. Okay, so this is, I sort it by the relevance. This 5.2 climbing tutorial, 5.2 visualize routes, is a map, a web map for an upcoming book tutorial in chapter five. It's the second tutorial in the book, hence 5.2. Uh, I'm going to click add and close. So the extent of this map is quite literally the extent of my browser window when I last saved this map. So I can I can change it however I want. I'm moving it around. It's not updating the web map itself. It's just this is a whole new instance of the map. And the map board name is the name of my web map. I can change that like to GIS demo and click OK. And I'm pretty happy with that. So now I'm going to go to the compilation panel where all the magic happens. And this is what the, if you went to that web map on ArcGIS Online, this is what it looks like. I will admit this isn't pretty, but the whole idea for me using Illustrator is to do all the aesthetic design in Illustrator. It's also Mercator, um, which is great, but not for the map I want to finish. So. I'm going to remove this imagery base map because I'm going to reproject the map using Maps for Adobe. And when I, I, the reason I'm removing the imagery is because this imagery raster layer will not reproject on the fly. If I wanted raster, I'd have to add um, the raster data after I reproject. So, and it would work. It would, it would reproject in Maps for Adobe. But I'm going to um, go here, and I think North America. This would be a good projection for this base map or for this map that I'm making. And the map I'm going to make real quick uh, 
is I'm going to use the geocentroid of the United of the, the contiguous US to map driving routes to each of these climbing locations. So each of these are some pretty popular climbing locations, including um, the New River Gorge National Park. Uh, I'm sure there's at least a couple people here who know what the geocentroid of the United States is. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add it as a place. So I'm just going to type in Lebanon, Kansas, which is the geocentroid. Tiny, tiny little town. Click plus and close. And there it is. I don't know if you can see it. I could go here to change style and I could make it larger so we can all see it really well. Um, OK, another thing I can do, which I'm not showing you, is I could make a choropleth map of the states. If it were the US counties, I could make a choropleth map of the counties because it does read the data. I'll just show you really quick. Right now it's saying show location only, so everything gets the same style. If I were to say show this by, I don't know, the number of people age 75 through 84, you, um, OK, it defaults to a graduated symbol, I guess. I could choose choropleth instead. Um, this is a really basic example of what you could do. You could actually get a lot more uh, detailed with that. I can l add labels to these states, which is useful. So it draws the labels as if it were a web map. So it didn't put Colorado on here because there's a lot of data density going on, and it's it's trying to optimize for you to view on a, on a web map. But I want all the labels, so I'm going to shrink them down and I'm going to say show overlapping labels. And that just says, you know, override that sort of web map label drawing uh, thing that it does. Undo that and click OK. So now I'm going to calculate the driving time um, and it's going to take about a minute. So while it's doing that, I'll talk to you. If I say visualize routes. I'll talk to you about the different account types. Um, it, it, already knows to choose the rock climbing destinations. It's I, I don't want to do line distance. I want to do driving distance and it will calculate the driving distance, but draw a straight line or I could have it follow the streets. I think it's pretty interesting to have it follow the streets. And here's the default name is Lebanon, Kansas to the rock climbing destinations. I'm just going to say, um, I don't know, road trip. That's what I want my layer to be, and I'll click apply. So while this is working, I'm going to say uh, talk to you about the different account types that are available to you right now. So there is a complimentary account. It is free. You don't get access to um, any of the premium features, but you and you cannot use it as a commercial driven software, but you you can kind of test it out a little. Then then we have the plus version. So with the plus version, you don't need an ArcGIS Online account. Um, you pay a low monthly fee uh, to have access to all of the premium features available in this extension, except for the features that you would need an ArcGIS Online account. For example, you can make web maps with this extension, uh, but you can't with a plus account because you don't have an ArcGIS Online account to host the web maps. And then there's the ArcGIS Online. So right now, uh, today, that's available to the GIS professional and creator users. Um, and beginning in late spring, early summer, it will also be available to the ArcGIS viewer and editor users as well um, with most access to most premium um, features, but the ArcGIS viewer and editor don't have access to all of the features. So they don't have access, for example, to this um, operation that I'm doing right now. And then, also in late spring slash early summer, there will be the Arc access to the ArcGIS um, enterprise accounts, which is pretty exciting, and they have access to all it. So I drew my lines. There they are. I could, okay, I'm going to click OK, and then here it is. Here they all are. All the lines that I just added, I could make labels from the variables that were created with this analysis. I want to know like how far you are in miles. Again, show overlapping and make them smaller so I can actually place them <laughs> correctly. And OK. And the next step here would be to sync, and that would create an Illustrator file. So I already did that. Here it is, the final map um, with a little bit of 
Illustrator magic applied to it. Like I said, the whole point wasn't to make it pretty in ArcGIS Online. It was to use Illustrator's graphic design capabilities to work on it there. So that is the extent direct workflow. There's a lot more you can do with it. Um, but really quick, I want to finish off with the ArcGIS Pro to Illustrator workflow. So here is a, a map. Um, a lot of you are probably familiar with ArcGIS Pro. You can make maps with ArcGIS Pro, um, share them to the web or um, print them if you wanted to. So I have this map. This is basically contains all of the data that I would want in a New River Gorge National Park map um, that was pretty detailed. And I have this inset map, uh, which contains, I mean, it contains all of those same layers, but I turned off all of the ones except for the ones I would want in an inset. It's not going to be as detailed as the main map. And then I placed both of those maps in this ArcGIS Pro layout. So I have this little inset up here and I have the main map. And it's quite obvious I did not do a lot to the aesthetics of this map. Um, and all I needed to do after I did this, I'll, you know, I did some data filters. A lot of people really enjoy using ArcGIS Pro to do um, their styles. I could have done that and still gone with this workflow, but I decided to um, do it all in Illustrator. And then I shared it as the AIX file type. Um, I kept my uh, resolution at 300 DPI. Um, and embed fonts is a good one, especially if you are sharing your AIX file with, with another Illustrator user. At least they can know which fonts you used. If they don't have it on their system, Illustrator can read um, those fonts if they're embedded. And then here is that. After I export it, I didn't include the Hillshade here, um, but this is everything else. I kind of um, moved stuff around a little, but it, I didn't do any styling to it yet. So here's what that would look like in Illustrator. Um, all neatly lay, uh, organized. I don't have to. Um, so it, when I say organized, it the layer structure is remembered from Pro. Um, before this format, people were using the PDF, and it would just be a single layer with every single piece of data or artwork in Illustrator in one layer, and no no uh, smart organiza organization system. So now I can like select. I know how to select all of these rivers and style them globally rather than trying to find, you know, among 100,000 paths um, and then styling them. It's all just selecting one layer at a time. And then you style it and you have fun in Illustrator. So I'm going to close with some slides. I know I have three minutes left. So let's go here. Boom, boom, boom. Hopefully you're seeing my slide. Yes, all right, awesome. All right, yeah, so let's talk about what's coming soon for ArcGIS Maps or Adobe. Um, we're thinking late spring, early summer, you'll have access to ArcGIS Enterprise, which is very exciting. Um, and I kind of talked about that before. Also, the viewer and editor licenses will have access to this as well. Um, and then another thing that's really exciting in 3.0 is you'll be able to that extension direct workflow that I showed, you'll be able to use vector tile base maps as well. So if you're familiar with Illustrator, you know that, uh, and you're all familiar with base maps, when you when you zoom in or out of, of, the, of a base map, it smartly knows how, which de how much detail to add, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, so you can get all of that detail in organized layers in Illustrator. So you have a lot of what you need to make a map and you don't have to stick with uh, the aesthetic that is in the vector tile. Um, in Illustrator, you can change it to whatever you want. Um, you saw the drastic difference between uh, the maps that I downloaded and what I did to them after I opened them in Illustrator. So um, pretty exciting. Also coming soon, supposed to coincide with 3.0. Um, I'm in the final stretches of writing this book. Um, it's seven chapters of tutorials for Maps for Adobe users. I try to write the tutorials so that each reader can touch all parts of the extension if they want. Um, so it'll walk you through every little button click if you really wanted to read it chapter by chapter. Um, yeah. And boom, this is... Uh, 
I promised a list of resources. I know this is very text heavy, so I guess take a screenshot or a picture if you're interested. Um, but yeah, this is this is a lot of how you can get started. Some tutorial links, the bottom two are sort of tutorial links. Um, the top two are kind of getting started, um, how to download it, etc. Give you a couple more seconds if you wanted to screenshot that. And then my final slide is just to thank you all for your time this morning. Um, that is it. All right, that's great. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah, any questions? Sarah, with the, uh, um, with the ArcGIS Pro, um, can you play around with that with the free version, the complimentary account? For the pro, or do you have? Is that just ArcGIS Online? I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? I I didn't hear the very first part of. Um, can you use the uh, complimentary uh, extension with uh, the ArcGIS Pro, or is that just online? Uh, you can. So if you have ArcGIS Pro and your GIS prof oh, if you have ArcGIS Pro 2.0 or later, you can you can use this now. Um, and you just would sign in with your GIS or professional account uh, if that's what you have. Uh, the complimentary account uh, will not work with the AIX file. Um, so that part, if you didn't have the GIS professional account today, you wouldn't be able to open your ArcGIS Pro created AIX file. I see. Okay. Is there other, does it only work with Adobe? Or do you, are you thinking yeah. about expanding it to different applications, you know, some open source at all, I think? It only works with Adobe Creative Cloud. Um, we, yeah, because we're kind of leveraging that cloudness of it to mm. link up with ArcGIS Online. Yeah, automatically create the layers, yeah. All the information is there, it's pretty cool. All right, cool. Thank you. I uh, I know I kind of flew through a lot, and there's I'm gonna put my email in the chat if anybody who had follow-up questions. Yeah, put uh, your email, any resources that you have there. Maybe just copy and paste your your second to the last slide there, and we'll use it. Do that. I don't know how to stop sharing. Maybe I'm not anymore.